in part 1 video, we mentioned that when we take the limit of quotients, sometimes the division rule cannot be used, meaning we cannot write the answer as L, the limit of F, divide M, the limit of G, because either M is 0 or L, M are not finite. It's problems 1, 2, and 3. Using factorization, conjugates and limits at infinity, we were able to solve these problems. In this video, we will look at a different type of problem, like problem 4. Problem 4 cannot be solved using either of the methods above. We need to use L'Hopital's rule. Let's review L'Hopital's rule. Suppose f and g are differentiable functions and the limits when x tends to a are either both 0 or both infinity, meaning the L'Hopital's rule conditions hold. In that case, L'Hopital's rule says that the limit for x tends to a of fx divided gx is equal to the limit for x tends to a of f prime x divided g prime x, provided the second limit exists. Let's take a look at this past year term test problem. If we consider the limits of the numerator and denominator separately, we get this. Since both limits are 0, we get the indeterminate form 0 over 0. This is a condition for L'Hopital's rule. Therefore, we can use L'Hopital's rule. It says that this limit is equal to the limit of the ddx of the numerator divide the ddx of the denominator. Evaluating the derivatives, we get e2x ddx of 2x minus 0 for the numerator and cosine x for the denominator. Now ddx 2x is equal to 2. So therefore we have the limit of 2e2x divided by cosine x. If we take the limit separately, we now get 2 times e to the power 0, which is 2, and cosine 0, which is 1. Since the limit of the denominator is non-zero, and both limits are finite, we can use the division rule. The answer is 2 over 1, or 2. In this next problem, again we check the limits of the numerator and denominator separately. Now both limits are 0, therefore we get the indeterminate form 0 over 0. This is the L'Hopital's rule condition. Therefore by L'Hopital's rule, this limit is equal to the limit of the derivative of the numerator, divide the derivative of the denominator. Evaluating the limit in the numerator, we get 1 over x, and for the denominator, this is secant squared pi x times ddx of pi x. Now, ddx pi x equals pi. Therefore, we have limit x going to 1 of 1 over x times pi secant squared pi x. If we take the limit of the numerator now, it is 1 over 1 or 1, and for the denominator, it's pi times 1 over cosine squared pi, which is equal to pi times 1 over negative 1 squared, which is pi. Therefore, the answer is 1 divided by pi using the division rule. To prepare for the next few problems, we look at some limits at infinity and infinite limits. 
Recall from part 1 video that the limit as x tends to infinity of xn is infinity. The limit as x tends to infinity of 1 over xn is 0. There are three more sets of important results. First, consider y equals e power x graph. From the graph, as x tends to infinity, e x goes up. Therefore, this limit is equal to infinity. As x tends to infinity and we take the reciprocal 1 over e x, the denominator e x tends to infinity. Therefore, the whole limit goes to 0. Next, let's look at the graph of ln x. As x tends to infinity, ln x goes up. So this limit equals infinity. On the other hand, as x goes to 0 from the right, ln x goes to minus infinity. So this limit is negative infinity. Next, we look at the graph of tangent inverse x. From the graph, as x tends to infinity, tangent inverse x tends to the line y equals to pi over 2. Therefore, this limit is pi over 2. Similarly, as x tends to negative infinity, tangent inverse x tends towards the line y equals to negative pi over 2. Therefore, this limit is negative pi over 2. At first glance, this problem does not look like a L'Hopital's rule problem. We need to rewrite it. Now, if we take the limit of the numerator and denominator separately, we get this. So we get the indeterminate form infinity over infinity, which is a L'Hopital's rule condition. Therefore, by L'Hopital's rule, the limit is equal to the limit of the derivative of ln x divided the derivative of e2x. Evaluating the derivatives, we get 1 over x the numerator and e2x ddx of 2x for the denominator. ddx of 2x is equal to 2. Therefore, the expression simplifies to 1 over 2x e2x. We can split the limit into three parts. Half, limit of 1 over x, and limit of 1 over e2x. In each case, this limit is 0 and 0. So we have half times 0 times 0, which is 0. We do something similar for this problem. This limit, when rewritten, is the limit of ln t over 1 over t. Taking the limit of the numerator, we get negative infinity and the denominator limit is infinity. Therefore, we get negative infinity over infinity, which is a L'Hopital's rule condition. Therefore, this equals the limit of the derivative of the numerator divide the derivative of the denominator. Evaluating both derivatives, we get the limit of 1 over t divided by negative 1 over t squared. We can simplify this expression by taking 1 over t divide negative 1 over t squared, which is the same as multiplying minus t squared. This simplifies to negative t. Take the limit of t going to 0 plus gives 0.
In this last problem, we have to evaluate two limits. By observation, the first limit has an indeterminate form, infinity over infinity. And the second limit has an indeterminate form, negative infinity over negative infinity. In both cases, we have the L'Hopital's rule condition. Therefore, this limit is equal to the limit of the ddx of the numerator divided by the ddx of the denominator. By chain rule, the numerator derivative is 1 over x squared plus x times ddx of x squared plus x. And the denominator derivative is 1 over x. ddx of x squared plus x is equal to 2x plus 1. Therefore, simplifying, we have the limit of 2x plus 1 over x squared plus x divided by 1 over x or times x over 1. This simplifies to... This is a similar problem to the part 1 video problem. We consider the leading terms 2x squared and x squared. Since they are raised to the same exponent, the limit is equal to the ratio of the coefficients, or 2 over 1, or 2. We do the same for the second limit. Up to this step, it is the same as the previous problem. Except in this step, we take the limit of the numerator and denominator separately. Both go to 0. So we have the indeterminate form again, therefore we can do two things. We can either factorize the numerator and denominator like part 1, or we can apply L'Hopital's rule again. It's easier to factorize, so let's factorize. Next, we simplify by cancelling the common terms. Finally, we take the limit, which is 1.